Okay, so this is going to be about Prince Harry's book, Spare. And also I want to talk about Nancy Pelosi and her husband, Paul Pelosi. So that's what it'll be about. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, situation because things um, they haven't officially on the web, royal websites uh, mentioned um, the titles of uh, Harry's grandchildren, which kind of suggests that they're not going to get them, uh, or Charles's grandchildren. I'm sorry, Harry's kids. Uh, so, uh, and then the book is coming out spare, and that's pretty obvious you know it's not uh it kind of gets you going in the direction that you expect the book going to be going in so we'll do a reading on that then nancy pelosi's husband paul pelosi hitting the hammer with the head two o'clock in the morning what was going on the assailants saying i'm going to tie you up and wait for nancy to come home and nancy of course is out campaigning or in dc or wherever she is so um we'll look at that So this will be about the Royals and USA politics. So the Royals. Um, the book is coming out. Harry's book, Spare. And uh, that title doesn't, uh, you know, make you think that this is going to be a very, um, I don't know, appealing book regarding the life of Harry. But it doesn't indicate anything uh, derogative directly towards um, Charles, although you could say that it may, does make you think of monarchy and Harry's place in the monarchy. And we know that he has wanted to talk about his feelings and how this made him feel. And apparently when Diana was raising the kids, she tried not to um, give too much credence to that uh, moniker as spare. Uh, towards Harry uh, when he was growing up. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what the cards can tell us about that book. And then, of course, uh, Pelosi. But before we do anything, let's uh, just have just a moment of meditation. I noticed this death card uh, shows up here, and uh, when I uh, opened the pack, it was uh, on top also. And uh, so that's an interesting card. That's ends of a cycle, but I mean, I haven't asked any question, although we have been talking about uh, Harry. So yeah, so we'll first we'll talk about that, then we'll do a little uh, uh, dive into Pelosi. So Harry, the book, Spare, what can the cards let us know about that? Is this book, let's ask quickly just maybe three cards, is this book going to uh, show Charles in a poor light, specifically? One, two, three. Is this book going to show Charles, King Charles, I'm sorry, in a poor light? So first card. Four of Rods. Well, this is our celebratory cards. Rods are actions, plans, uh, forward movement. And the Four of Rods indicates, you know, moving, uh, uh, celebrating. I always say smaller celebrations towards something larger in the back here. So spare. Um, what's, is the book going to um, be derogative for Charles? And uh, we have a small celebration, which could be the, um, the book coming out. And, you know, in the background, the larger celebration is the castle. But in this case, we want to consider that that's, Kind of pretty far away. So this is uh, indicate some uh, forward movement, some positive action uh, for that book. The next card, whether it's going to affect um, 
Yeah, Charles. So this is the Nine of Rods. And again, actions, plans, forward movement. But the Nine of Rods is embattled. Okay. The Nine of Rods is, is been through the, through it and is facing more. The last card will the book, um, be derogatory for Charles is the Four of Pentacles really trying to hold on to your value. So yeah, I think, um, it's, it's not, I don't think it's going to be a takedown, but I don't think it's, I think it's going to be raw. I think it's going to show, um, uh, Harry's feelings. And, and you know, what's interesting in a family is, um, even in my family, there were five of us, uh, and each of us has a slightly different idea about, uh, our upbringing and um, and about each other's upbringing. So the way that I feel that some of my sibling, siblings um, may have uh, had their uh, upbringing experience, what I thought their experience might be isn't necessarily what they would tell you their experience was and vice versa, what they thought mine was isn't exactly what it was, I'm sure. So uh, that's what this is going to be about. This is going to be Harry's view on that situation that he didn't ask to be placed in to be spare in a monarchy okay so there's just that so now let's do a full let's do a dyadic cross okay six cards on um uh how the book is going to affect specifically charles not necessarily the monarchy but specifically charles uh six cards to start with so one two three four five and that's six. So how is this book going to affect Charles? I don't care about the monarchy right now. Charles. Signifier. Okay. So six of pentacles. Okay. Well, this is a distribution of value. So it looks like there's going to be, the book is going to distribute the value of the blame, if you want to say that's what it is, or, or the experience uh, that, that uh, Harry will no doubt describe. Uh, uh, it'll be an equal distribution of that between Charles personally and I think the monarchy. How could it not be? The challenge to it <coughs> uh, is this Four of Cups. Cups are compassion, emotion, or heartfelt situations. And this Four of Cups being offered something that he doesn't necessarily want. Okay. And this fella is, is a bit indifferent to what's um, uh, being offered up here. And, and already being blessed with a lot. So the challenge to this equal distribution of value uh, has to do with uh, being offered this emotional. And notice this is a smaller cup of emotion than these others that are already in front of you. This redhead here, I think, is Harry. The base of this whole thing ah, is the end of a cycle. Ten of swords, actions, plans, forward movement, uh, not forward movement, but uh, justice and rules. Uh, truth, justice, and rules. So this is the end, end, end of a cycle. So at this point, what this is about, what all this is, this book is about, because this is an end of a cycle. Being the spare isn't particularly uh, relevant uh, anymore. He's not even the spare anymore, and uh, because uh, his brother's children have moved up in uh, the line of succession three times, so you know it'd, it'd be deep before it ever got to Harry. So this is the base of this is that this is the end of, of this this era of that monarchy influence. The past of this then with this Queen of Swords, truth, justice, rules and law, the Queen of Swords, um, this is in the past. So uh, maybe be telling us that, you know, any feeling of honesty, of truth, um, of, of justice is is in the past. And there was a good and it was a feminine amount of energy uh, that we were talking about there. Not necessarily a kingly amount of energy. Up in the sky here with this Queen of Cups is the uh, compassion that we would hope for. Uh, so, you know, you might even stretch that and say this is uh, his mom. But, you know, you're hoping with this book to get an understanding, some kind of emotional, significant com emotional um, understanding out there with this book. And the final outcome with this Knight of Pentacles, this is the knight fighting for his value. The knight is the member of the royal court who will absolutely go to battle for to protect the value that he's been entrusted with, and that's Charles. Okay, So the monarchy and Charles are two things completely different, but it looks like they can't be uh, un, you know, un, 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 uh, disentangled. We're going to have to do four more cards. So, Charles, I want to know, this is a good explanation about the book, but I want to know 
what the cards can let us know about Charles and this book. You know, how is that going to affect him? He's going to be fighting for his value. It does say that, as a matter of fact. Okay, so the very self of that question, the effect of the book on Charles, is the Page of Pentacles. Okay, so this is a weak uh, offer in the Royal Court. This is value. It's a weak, a weak value in the environment of, ah, success. This uh, very uh, success that we saw in the first set of cards where we had those four pentacles that were celebrations, and this is a victory. So this weak amount of value that's going to be giving to Charles, because we're talking about Charles, is, um, is in the environment of the success of the book. And again, Charles is being overshadowed by someone other than himself. First it was uh, Diane, uh, Diana, and now uh, it's this. Um, and then the hopes and the fears for this is that Charles uh, finds some way to be compassionate. And then the uh, final outcome of this is that Ace of Rods is a great, great big f movement forward. So this is an action. This book is coming out. The uh, e e relationship of, of Harry and his father will evolve to whatever it may become. But this is a definite uh, move that's going to happen. So I think it's just going to change people. <coughs> How does the book affect Charles? It's an equal distribution of blame, of value, okay, between Charles and the monarchy. And it's in the um, uh, challenge by uh, Harry just being offered very little uh, compassion and not even wanting it right now. The base of the whole thing is the end of that era that was uh, Prince Harry as a spare. <coughs> in the past, this this queen of rules and just this could be mom, um, just looking over the whole uh, charade that's going on but with a likely outcome of Charles fighting for his value. And the very self of that question brings Charles back to uh, just a minor player in that very little value given to him in the book, or perhaps even a blame. You know, it could be more blamed on the monarchy in the environment of the very celebrations of that book. And then uh, with uh, the hopes and fears that Charles is the compassionate king that he needs to be. But the acknowledgement is that this is a big action move forward uh in everything it's a it's a, a new start because of this end okay and now we want to talk about pelosi so that's a pretty uh horrifying situation uh, that happened there that um that someone should break into the family home with a hammer two o'clock in the morning and be hunting Pelosi and uh, hit an old man, 82 years old, in the head with a hammer and sent him to the hospital. And God knows what would have happened if Pelosi had actually been there. She, she would have been out there trying to protect her husband. What would the story have been then? So let's see uh, what the cards can tell us. Uh, let's see if they can send us in some sort of a direction in just three cards. One, two, three. So three cards, Nancy Pelosi, attack on her husband. What direction can the cards send us in for that? Three of Cups, this is feminine, compassionate uh, energy. This is uh, the Knight of Rods fighting for your actions. And this is the Five of Pentacles being left out in the cold. The the um, action of what happened, okay, that attack has brought out, uh, you know, the feminine, compassionate energy uh, in into this uh, cycle, into this phase of this debacle that is this crazy political situation we're in in the United States. And then with the Knight of Rods, just lets us know that, but there's a fight for this uh, action that's going to continue. And I don't think it's the um, the uh, ugly action of the attack. I think it's going to be the action of uh, Nancy uh, in what she feels is like her fight for democracy, I think. And in the uh, final card for that suggestion of, of, of what this is about is being left out in the cold. And, you know, this has to be those people that are making these attacks. They have a legitimate feeling, I think, uh, it, because you wouldn't do that otherwise. There's no other reason for this guy to break into that house. He wasn't personally offended by uh, these people. You know, he chose because something important to him, he felt needed defending. 
and uh, it as ever as deranged as he was. So that's being left out in the cold. So uh, it's bringing on some feminine uh, energy. The movement goes forward, and uh, this uh, f uh, feeling of disenfranchisement, I suppose, is uh, so prevalent there. So now let's see. Uh, will this attack have some sort of an effect on the elections that are coming up and in our politics in general? Okay, so will this attack, will this attack uh, have some sort of a, a significant a positive uh, push for the um, fight for democracy, I guess, in the United States, as opposed to fascism, nationalism, I don't know. Six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and then that's six. So, let's see. Is this going to move the needle in some way? Signifier card. Well, we got the King of Pentacles. So this is a huge, this is his, the most valuable uh, 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 movement or card in that value suit of Pentacles. So uh, it's significant. This, uh, what happened, it, it will be significant. In the environment of the end of a cycle. Underpinned by finding some sort of a balance of value. Uh, in the past of this, with this page of rods, so rods are action plans, forward movement. The page is the weakest of the royal court. But this is a message. This is a beginning. This is a coming. Br this guy can only bring this to the court and say, what do you think of this plan? What do you think we should do? Should we move forward? Can we move forward? And it's someone else's um, um, decision to do that. In the sky of this, for whether this will, um, what, what this will do for that, movement that uh, Pelosi is fighting for is uh, celebratory and but it's we always find these this four of rods uh, you know a smallish celebration on towards something bigger so small celebration I would consider this almost the White House in the back here in this question a smaller celebration towards uh, democracy for the White House and the final outcome is uh, looking at things from another perspective so maybe this is the one of the acts, one of the final acts, because she's third in line to the presidency, uh, or second in line. There's the president, then there's the vice president, who's the first in line, and then there's uh, the speaker, who is the second in line. So she's second in line to the presidency. So this is looking at all of this in another uh, way. Um, will this uh, move uh, Nancy's uh, movement forward? Well, this is this is very valuable. What's happened here, and it's all uh, challenged by or uh, the the end of that cycle and underscored by trying to find the balance of, of power and uh, in the past of this is this is the, was the message of doing something with where in the sky were uh, smaller celebrations on towards something larger which I think would be uh, the White House and then the um, final uh, outcome for this is that it's all about finding that ever other perspective I guess really it will just remain a mystery until, uh, as far as that book is concerned, until things come out. And then the Pelosi saga, um, the woman's dedicated, but all these old folks in politics in the U.S. and probably everywhere need to get out and let some young blood come in. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So this is the Aquarian Tarot by David Palladini. This is published by U.S. Game Systems. And I really love these cards, and they've got an interesting story behind them, too. And there's a follow-up deck um, that I sometimes use uh, together with these. But uh, So they come in a, a typical, uh, just a little cardboard card box. It's fine. Um, the artist is David Palladini, who was born in Italy but raised in the United States in Highland Park, Illinois. So that's a little bit interesting once you get to know the cards. And uh, the instruction book that comes with them is just a run-of-the-mill, uh, this card means this and that card means that kind of thing. Really nothing all very meaningful in here, and it's kind of printed really small. So there's all of that. The interesting thing about these cards is uh, what happened, David Palladini was just finishing up um, art school when, I forget who it was, someone approached him about doing uh, tarot cards. Um, and now David Palladini just recently died. This is 2000 and 21 in May, and he may have died three years ago or in that in that time span. So 
uh, 17, 2017 or something. And then, so then these were done at the beginning of his career, which would have been put him in his twenties uh, or late twenties, I would imagine. So you can see that these are very nice cards, very soft spirit and very to the point. Uh, they're not hard to uh, interpret. <clears throat> and I lay these out like this so that you can get an idea of what a full deck looks like if you're not a person who buys a lot of cards or or sees a lot of tarot cards. I do because I just like to collect them. I think they're, they're little pieces of art. <clears throat> but uh, this fellow uh, did these right out of art school and then he could never have imagined they would come such an integral, become such an integral part of tarot. And then later in his life he went ahead and um, and did an updated uh, deck. But these are the Aquarian Tarot by David Palladini. And uh, they're really great. I love them. Well, I'm Mark. This has been My Journey Through Tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.